We will go on ahead and get started for today's Career and College Readiness Office Hours. As a reminder, please submit your questions in the online chat feature and I will moderate them and get them asked to our medical experts. Um, today, we are going to be covering some large school reopening updates, but as always, our work streams include more than just school reopening. We have four different work streams in our office, and those include our pathway initiatives and readiness support, our foundational skills, our quality diplomas, and our post-secondary readiness. So at the end of the call, if you have any questions surrounding anything on the screen in front of you, feel free to put them in the chat and we will get them answered by the appropriate department. So for today, we do have two special guests with us. As always, we have Dr. Finger with Children's Hospital joining us today on our call. And we also have from Oshner's uh, Hospital, Dr. Lenars, who will be happy to assist Dr. Finger as we discuss our updates. So I'm gonna turn, uh, turn it over to the two of them for a moment and have them come on camera and give us a little high level overview of the current COVID situation in the state of Louisiana. And then we will get into our CDC updated guidance. So Dr. Uh, Finger and Dr. Lenars, if y'all would take it away for a few minutes, I'd appreciate it. Sure. Thank you, Meredith. Thanks, Billy, for joining. You know, just briefly for the COVID overview, I think everyone is aware that in the post-holiday early December week that we're in right now, we're seeing increasing case counts across the entire state in all 64 parishes, essentially. And we're still unclear when that peak is going to occur, whether it will be this week or next week or the week after. But we're all very, very concerned about it. Um, with that in mind, um, the CDC guidelines that were released yesterday sort of don't take into account necessarily local, state, and parish prevalence. But regardless, I think it's important to review them and to review what they mean and to sort of review how the state of Louisiana the Office of Public Health is going to um, respond to those. So briefly, the guidelines that came out um, were an effort to make some recommendation on potential opportunities to shorten the 14-day duration of quarantine for close contacts who remain asymptomatic, i.e. do not have any symptoms consistent with COVID-19. And the highlights here on the slide are that there's an opportunity potentially to shorten the duration of quarantine to 10 days after the exposure uh, without any ancillary lab testing being performed if the individual remains asymptomatic through those 10 days. Another opportunity is if you're in an area where COVID testing is readily available, then quarantine could potentially end after day seven if the individual close contact has a negative test between days five and seven. In both of those situations, this, the individual needs to remain completely symptom free, all right? Regardless of whether the uh, quarantine ends after day seven or day 10, continued symptom monitoring and mask wearing and adherence to all of the other mitigation strategies need to continue through day 14. And if any symptoms develop in that individual before day 14, that individual should immediately self-isolate and follow the local public health instructions. Again, what happens now is the Louisiana Department of Health, it takes these guidelines and makes a recommendation which will be forthcoming in the next few days about their recommendations taking into account what's happening with COVID-19 across the state. And again, they will balance that with, um, knowing that there still is some increased risk if we decrease the duration from 14 days to 10 days or to seven days with a negative test. It's not as good as staying in quarantine for the uh, 14 days, but as we've learned over time, adherence and compliance to that 14 days of quarantine has waxed and waned. And the thought is that we might see increased adherence and compliance to um, these shorter durations, if the public knows that 
And also we think it will increase the ability for close contacts to get tested potentially between days five and seven. Nevertheless, we're waiting for the final word from our partners at the Louisiana Office of Public Health to finalize their guidelines before we internalize and make any final recommendations to the Department of Education. I know Dr. Lenars is on as well, and I know we share our same thoughts about this, and it's a balancing game. I'd like to hear what his perspective is on this as well. Um, I, I agree with everything that um, Dr. Finger said. I think it's very important for those in um, leadership and education roles, and we're all um, certainly COVID educators, whether we signed up for it or not at this point, and I, by that I mean educators as well as medical folks, uh, to continually reinforce that this, um, uh, two, two points, this only applies as Leron said, if the child or teacher is asymptomatic. Um, and in order to, um, to apply that tenant, one needs to monitor for symptoms absolutely continuously. So in some ways, folks need to be even more vigilant about monitoring for um, symptoms. Um, and um, the other is that 14 days um, essentially of true quarantine, nearly 100% guarantees that there won't be transmission. 10 days um, actually produces a quantifiable increased risk of from uh, one to 10% chance that someone will become infected or manifest uh, the illness after the shortened quarantine. And so uh, my point is that this is not, this is like everything else we've done in COVID. It's a risk benefit. Um, we're weighing some modestly increased risk here um, against the benefit of in-person education is really what this comes down to when we talk about at the school level, shortening the quarantine. And then the last thing I would just add is that it's our feeling in our school's program that the seven day version, which does require the negative test um, and the type of test is under discussion at, at our State Department of Health, um, regardless of what the CDC has said, um, that um, that carries an even a greater increased risk and we also believe it kind of puts the educators, the school folks, leaders in a much more complicated operational position because then you have a cohort of quarantine kids who come back at seven days, a cohort that would come back at 10 days. Um, and so, um, and they're also required then to um, interpret the, accuracy and the type of test, determine the timing of the test, when was the sample actually collected. So I'll just come right out with a, the ending, the punchline from our school's program is that if you're going to take on the marginally increased risk, we think that the straight up 10 days without testing is operationally the most logical to apply. I echo that loudly. All right, we do have a few questions that have come into the chat. Um, I do want to let everyone know that as of now, we are working with the Department of Health, the Louisiana Department of Health to operationalize these um, guidelines. So while some of the questions we are unable to answer at this time, once we release our, the guidance from LDH, we will be able to answer those more fully. So if we don't get to your question today, it will be addressed once we have the full guidance from our partners at the Department of Health. So our big um, question that we have right now is, what is the impact on this, this semester with the upcoming holidays, Dr. Finger, versus next semester where we might 
see more of an impact on these new guidelines? Yeah, uh, that's a great question, Meredith. I know there's a lot of uh, anxiety and perception of urgency. I think the bigger impact on these will certainly be next semester, since most schools across the state have about this week plus two more weeks of, in, of educational activities planned before the week of Monday the 21st. Begins. So I think the difference um, is really gonna be felt at the beginning of next academic semester after the winter holidays are completed. And I anticipate we'll have those, you know, we'll have the guidelines from the Louisiana Department of Health over the next few days. We'll be able to adjust our recommendations and everyone will be able to have time to plan appropriately. So I think that's a, it's a great question. I think the major impact certainly is for next academic semester. Okay, so as of now, school systems should continue to follow our existing 14-day quarantine guideline until we are able to um, operationalize this new update with the a health page. Absolutely, and I do feel it's imperative for us to wait until the Louisiana Department of Health sends out their new health care advisory. Absolutely. Okay, thank you so much for clarifying that for us. And as a reminder too, um, for our participants today, uh, both Dr. Finger and Dr. Lenars will be on the 9 a.m. system leader call tomorrow morning where they will also be able to address this. So hopefully we'll have some more updates for you at that time. If not, we will do our best to get these out to you in a timely manner. And we do appreciate the um, thought and the review that's going into these as we continue to have a safe uh, school year for our students. So we are certainly grateful for all the work that's being put in to realize the challenges from the quarantine guidelines and operationalize this new update. So thank you all both so much for that. And if you don't mind sticking around for a few minutes in case there's any other questions, I would appreciate it. Otherwise, we are incredibly grateful for your partnership as always. So thank y'all. All right, our next Thanks update is surrounding our um, spring semester uh, PPE requests. So if you'll remember in the beginning of the fall semester, we were able to partner with an organization and get some face coverings, enough for every student at your school system, hopefully, and some other supplies to our schools. At um, this time, we are able to offer that again. So the department in collaboration with the special school district will be once again making face coverings and a hand sanitizer available for all school systems that need to replenish your supply. So if you do need to replenish your supply, there's information on this slide along with in the newsletter that was released on Tuesday with directions on how to reach out in um, make those requests for face coverings and for hand sanitizer. So we are excited to be able to offer that so that our second semester can be just as safe as our first semester was. And then our next update, I believe, is surrounding the modified phase two guidance. So as we're all aware, last Wednesday, Governor Edwards uh, made a proclamation to move Louisiana to a modified phase two for COVID-19 recovery. Um, in response to this, Bessie President Sandy Holloway was able to approve emergency rules that allow but do not require our school systems to continue to follow phase three minimum requirements for reopening facilities. So as such, school sites should consult their school system leaders to determine what phase they will be operating in and align accordingly with the phased guidance. So that's up to every school system to determine if they are going to return to phase two for um, school, their school system or if they are going to stay in phase three. So make sure you check with your school system leader to determine that. And if you need more information, the memo is available on our Strong Start library. Our next update is related to the Binax Now Rapid COVID testing kits. So we are able to work with the Louisiana Department of Health and we are able to expand this through December. So if you have not yet requested your test and you're realizing that you are indeed going to need to use them, um, you are still able to complete the survey and we will still work with the Department of Health to coordinate getting that information to them. So if you do not have a CLIA certificate number or a community provider to assist you in testing, you can reach out 
to the email listed here and they will assist you with um, getting a community partner to work with you on these tests. The only thing to note is that if you complete the survey after December 10th, your um, test will be delivered via uh, a mailing address. So we will, they will be shipped with UPS or FedEx or whoever they are partnering with. And so you will have to have somebody there to receive them over the holidays. So please make sure that you note that extended timeline, but also that if it's after December 10th, they will come to you via the mail as opposed to the National Guard. And then to supplement this, we also have a Binax Now FAQ document. We also have a manufacturer's document, which will give you more information should you need it. So those two things are also found in our um, Strong Start library. Okay, I'm going to, on our next slide, I'm going to let uh, Kimberly Buckingham with Children's Hospital give us an update surrounding our town hall that we will be hosting next week. And I do note that the date is wrong on this slide, but it is correct in the um, table. So we will make sure to get that corrected. Hi everyone, thank you, Meredith. I uh, appreciate the opportunity. Children's Hospital will have its town hall in collaboration with the Department of Education next Wednesday. And as Meredith mentioned, the date on this slide references last month's but it will be next Wednesday, December 9th at one o'clock p.m. Uh, Pre-registration takes just a couple of seconds, so don't be hesitant around that. Uh, we'll just review our resources and continue to answer questions, especially around any updated, updated guidance. And um, we'll look forward to having you on there. So please feel free to reach out to thrivekids at lcmchealth.org if you have any questions ahead of time you'd like us to consider. And we appreciate you tuning in and all the work that you're doing. Appreciate it, Meredith, thank you. All right. Thank you, Kimberly. If you have not had an opportunity to attend one of um, the Children's Hospital town halls, they are very informative. They're extremely interactive for participants. So I do recommend that everybody um, that is able can join them so that they can get some of their questions answered. Dr. Finger, if you are still on, we do have a few um, more questions that I'd like to ask you about that. So the big question that we have right now is, the biggest question I'm seeing right now with this, is what is the recommendation for band inquire in the phase two modified? Is it the same as we've been recommending? Yes, we have not changed that at all. Okay, so outside if at all possible is the Absolute. best option. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for the clarification, Meredith. Okay, thank you. Um, and then the other question that we have to this goes back to um, the wearing of masks with the phase two, we should still be wearing masks regardless of which phase we're in. We absolutely, yes. It's one of the best mitigation strategies that we have. Okay, and that includes outdoors and during uh, physical education. Style yeah, and, and what our wording has been is a, as tolerated during aerobic activity, if people need a mask break, they, we ask that they separate them for a period of time from the other children if possible. Okay. And we do have a question asking if masks are needed if desks are spaced at six feet apart. And the answer to that is yes. You should be wearing a mask and doing your physical distancing. Um, both of those are mitigation efforts that work together to keep our students and our staff safe. Um, do you have any guidance for the singing of Christmas carols in the classroom with holiday parties coming up and activities? I know we discussed this prior to Thanksgiving, but as we're closer, I think it would be nice to, to kind of refresh everybody. Yeah. On. Uh, I think the presence of the holiday season is challenging because we want to do things that we did in 2019, but we're really unable to do them. So we shouldn't be doing any activities in the next two and a half weeks within the classroom unless they meet all of the mitigation guidelines that we already have in place. So I don't know, you know, it's hard to be the Scrooge on a call like this with 250 attendees from across the state. But again, any, any uh, potential decrease of attention to the mitigation strategy that is in place increases the risk. 
and I can't quantify that risk, but it would be higher than if we don't do those things. So I would strongly discourage gatherings where people are gonna be unmasked and in close proximity to each other and singing and eating inside in, in that proximity. It's just simply not worth it. And I think we've done so good for such a long time. Um, the horizon is here and we can see it. It's within the next several months, things will start to get better. We just need to remain vigilant and adhere to everything that we've been doing. Okay, great. Thanks for reminding us um, of that. I do think another question that we have that's been a pattern is when the uh, department, Louisiana Department of Health uh, introduces these new guidelines, will they be retroactive? So for example, if somebody is in the middle of a 14 day quarantine, should they continue that 14 days when these are released or are they allowed to? Uh, what, what, what I would say is almost certainly, um, and I say this having had lots of conversation with the folks at the Department of Health who are writing the guidelines, that they will, will be applicable and retroactive. So someone who reaches day 10 of that 14 day quarantine, I would support their return to school while mon continuing to monitor for symptoms between days 10 and 14. I think it's a little bit harder to retroactive someone for the seven days. Like, you know, I think if they reach day eight and they have the ability to get a test and that's a part of the guidelines, we'll have to see what they say. But I would hesitate to comment on the day seven plus a negative test until I see what the Louisiana um, application of the CDC guidelines actually states. Absolutely. Um, we do have a question that is, um, is something that I think a lot of our schools are gonna be experiencing shortly is with flu season coming around and other illnesses about if a staff or student is symptomatic of COVID but has a negative test, do we still need to be cautious and quarantine other students and staff, or can we assume that it that they the other members of the classroom are safe to continue attending school until the other student is well? I think I lost you in the question, Meredith. I think was the question if someone has symptoms consistent with COVID nineteen, yes, and they have a negative test can they still return to school um, after their symptoms resolve? I think it was your the, question. The question is, do we need to quarantine other students around them if their test is negative? No, you do not need to quarantine other students around them if their COVID-19 test is negative. Okay, but they should definitely stay away from school while they are still symptomatic. A absolutely. Okay, that seems to be our biggest questions. Um, we do have some questions related to when will the recording of this be this call be available and that will be hopefully by this afternoon, if not by the end of the day um, tomorrow and the other questions that are very specific regarding our uh, the updated CDC quarantine guidelines are something that we will be able to address once we um, receive the guidance from the uh, Louisiana Department of Health. Um, we do have one last question that came in. Dr. Finger, if you're still on the call, is that, uh, let me see, okay. If there is no, if they do not take a COVID test, but they are symptomatic, do you still need to quarantine close contacts? Yeah, so with that instance, I would refer to our initial algorithm, which still takes place. So that's the symptomatic tree, and that's if they have not had a test done um, with an answer within 48 hours or seen a provider who provides an alternate diagnosis, that's the trigger to call your regional medical director to seek advice, who will give you the advice on what to do, whether to proceed with the presume that child is positive and give you advice on potentially quarantining other kids. Okay, and then we do have one more question. Um, should we preventatively quarantine a class if a student is exposed and we are waiting for a test result? So I think this is referencing that 48 hours um, yep. adjustment that we made. So if you could review that real quickly for our guests, that would be great. Sure, so if you look at the two page algorithm we have that um, takes you through, I don't know if we have the ability to potentially pull that up in real time, Meredith or Kimberly. But Kimberly, would you like to share your screen? If someone Sorry. is symptomatic um, and they have any of those symptoms consistent potentially with COVID-19, 
the rec recommendation is to remove them from the school premises and the child has an opportunity to either um, just go and get a COVID test or they could choose to see a, a provider. Um, if they get a COVID test and it's negative, that's great. If they go to see an, a provider who provides an alternate diagnosis to COVID-19 and provides that child with a note, then both of those children, the negative COVID test and the child who has another diagnosis can return to the school grounds 24 hours after their symptoms have resolved essentially, right? We don't want someone who still has a fever and a bad cough running around this school. However, if 48 hours after the child had symptoms at school, if they still haven't produced a COVID result and they still haven't um, seen that provider, that's the time point at which you would call your regional medical director for some guidance on what to do. And again, everything I just said is here in fine print. The focus for the question that Meredith just asked is focus on the purple print right in the middle of the screen. If no test result or provider evaluation has been confirmed within 48 hours of the onset of symptoms, call your local re regional medical director team to get more advice on what to do. Sometimes that COVID test result is coming back within a couple of hours and they'll probably tell you just wait other times they'll make a decision based on what local prevalence is in your area to make an informed decision absolutely thanks for sharing that with us and as a reminder all of these documents are available in our strong start library along with an faq document that is updated after every one of our calls that has the most frequently asked questions from this call um, available with links to it. So make sure you check out both of those. We did have a question, Dr. Finger, about um, if a student receives a negative test, is there a need to retest or are we pretty confident in the results of the negative test? There is no need to retest. And in addition, when a child or team member has a positive test, we follow a symptom and time-based return to school. Those, those individuals with positive tests do not need to have a negative test documented. All right, thank you so much. And for those stu uh, schools who are awaiting the delivery of their Binax Now test, if you would reach out to your contact at the Louisiana Department of Health, they will be happy to um, let you know the timeline for that. My understanding is these tests are coming in on a rolling basis. So they are getting them out as they come in to um, the Louisiana Department of Health. So if you're awaiting those, please reach out to them and they will um, let you know in a, an estimated timeline, I imagine. So as one more reminder, we will have a 9 a.m. systems leader call tomorrow. And so you will be able to ask these questions again of Dr. Finger and Dr. Lenars and hear some additional updates. So we will upload this recording at some point this afternoon, maybe tomorrow morning, and we will place this uh, slide deck in our Strong Start library so that you can access it. If you have any other questions surrounding any of our, our work streams, I will stay on for about two or three more minutes so that I can answer those individually. And if your question was not answered, um, look for it to be answered next week once we get our finalized guidance from the Louisiana Department of Health. So as always, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for helping to keep our students safe this semester. And we look forward to another safe semester in the spring. <laughs>